unmute. Guru Maharaj, you are on mute. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Can hear now. I can't seem to bring up the screen. It seems to have disappeared. Can you hear me, Mara? I can hear. I can hear you. And I think you can hear me. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I just can't bring up the screen at all. Well, maybe this is it. Okay, now I got it. All right. Yeah. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanah Janah Salakaya Chaksu Un Melitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Viranta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Charu Swami Iti Namine Snigda Chaita Sara Netra Bhagavancha Rasabhutam Prabhupada Gata Prana Mamami Bhakti Charu Padam Jai Panchakopa Taru Bhischa Kripa Sindhu Bhaibhacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhunitya Ramdasi Advaita Gada, Har Sivasadi Gaur, Bhaktarindu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the actual Titi day for the divine disappearance of uh, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj is actually the 24th of this month. Today is the solar anniversary day, July 4th, one year ago, according to the solar calendar. So I thought today would be a good day for me to speak on Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. We can also speak again on the 24th, but today I was impelled to speak. I was chanting Japa this morning. And the thought came in my mind very swiftly and very strongly that this is what, is what I should do today. So I felt inspired by that thought. And it's appropriate. Um, this is not an easy subject to speak on because we can't really do it justice. When you speak on in the life of a great soul, you always somehow or other uh, fall short of what could be said or what is the actual uh, understanding of such a personality. Uh, Bhakti Chuba Maharaj is one that was unique in a few ways and exemplary in many ways, his uniqueness in his devotional life was his, uh, we might say, unflinching love for Srila Prabhupada, which was so strong and so obvious in everything that he did and said that, uh, you know, you could have, you would have to say, in all sense of the term, he was fully a Prabhupada person. And that love that he had for Prabhupada was, part of that love was 
Prabhupada's love for the whole world. And Srila Prabhupada had this mood of wanting to give everyone Krishna consciousness, no, despite whatever personal sacrifice it meant on his part, Prabhupada was so determined to push aside anything of his own needs and simply work for the for the spreading of Krishna consciousness. Bhakti Sarum Maharaj had that same mood. Even at his elderly age, he was 75 years old when he left us. And he was still traveling, preaching, writing, opening up projects, and uh, inspiring so many, many to come to Krishna consciousness and take up the same mood that he had developed, the mood of intense desire to spread Krishna consciousness. Those who knew Bhakti Chiru Maharaj more personally know that he was very, very loving. <laughs> Not simply in his words, but uh, you could always expect from his God brothers that he would embrace you, smile, welcome you, ask you how you are, and uh, this is how he would greet the, the devotees. And it wasn't, you know, sometimes we see people who are, have this external loving mood, but it's more external than it is internal. But for Bhakti Chirumar, it wasn't like that. It was completely genuine, coming from his heart and inspiring so many. Uh, he would humble you with his humility, he with his compassion and with his loving nature that um, sometimes you were left speechless and couldn't respond to such such devotion as he was exhibiting that. Yet on another front, he was a warrior, a general, a person who never uh, shirked away from responsibilities because of difficulty. He was a person who was very innovative in Krishna consciousness, thinking of different ways to spread Krishna consciousness. He took the life of Srila Prabhupada and turned it into a wonderful video production called Avacharan, the story of Srila Prabhupada's life which was put out in a series of about 20 full length videos that were practically motion picture size, which are really deep in going into the history of Srila Prabhupada's movement in his early days in India and how Srila Prabhupada spread Krishna consciousness around the world. He, uh, he opened a very successful and very vibrant temple project in one of the most holiest places in India known as Ujjain. Ujjain is noted for its Kumbha Mela. It's one of the four spots by which the elixir of immortality fell and made that spot a place of holiness and great devotion. Today, when you go to Ujjain, if you travel around the area, you see there are so many temples, so many uh, programs of devotional activity. Maharaj was offered some land in there and he took it right away and established a very beautiful temple. Um, I was fortunate enough to be there at the opening of the temple. The year was um, 2000, oh boy, I can't remember the actual year. Yeah, it was around 2011 or 12, something in that area, right around that time. A very vibrant temple, 
huge five altars. They have deities of Shisi Radha, Adan Mohan, Shisi Gornitai, Krishna Balaram, Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra, and a practically an exact replica of Lord Nisringadev from Sridham Mayapur. Five vibrant, huge altars, a huge temple room, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ceiling carvings with Krishna performing Rasa Lila on the ceiling in all its glory, so ornate, so beautifully carved, so colorful. And then he established a guest house right next to it. And then next to that, he established a apartment building for people who wanted to, devotees who needed residence, mostly grihastas. And then after that, he established right next to that, a very uh, excellent and very authorized uh, Ayurvedic clinic, which I had the good fortune to visit two years in a row and receive treatment there from some of the best Ayurvedic doctors who Maharaj commissioned take on the responsibility of doing this service. And later on, these doctors, or even the people that worked with the doctors, became devotees of Maharaj disciples. So this was Maharaj. He was always expanding Krishna consciousness. But he was never attached to any of his projects. He would travel as much as he could. He was like Prabhupada. Prabhupada in his elderly age was not interested in staying in one place and simply um, doing bhajan. Prabhupada wanted to spread Krishna consciousness as much and as fast as he could. And Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was in that same mood. Um, what he did, and you can tell many times, he also established a, a uh, mold shop. They were making deities of Radha and, of Radha and Krishna, uh, Mortis of Srila Prabhupada, uh, building Vyasasans and various other uh, paraphernalia that makes up temple worship. So that's also part of the Jain project. Um, those of you who have, who have the opportunity to go there, please visit. You'll find it's just an amazing temple, even today. Um, personally speaking, when I had a lot of association with Maharaj, uh, somehow or other, he was very kind to me. He would always make you feel like you were important, not in a way that was material but in a way that he cared about you he cared on a personal level he would always ask how are you how's your travels how's your preaching how's your health he uh, and it was genuine it was coming from his heart very personal when Prabhupada first when he first met Srila Prabhupada Prabhupada gave him initiation very quickly. And the devotees who were there at the time were wondering, well, Prabhupada doesn't do that. You know, you usually have to wait for some six months or so. But I think even after maybe a one month or two, he received first initiation. And then Prabhupada gave him second and right after that sannyas initiation within I think a, a year of the time he first came in contact with Srila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada could see here is somebody who is very spiritually advanced. So he acknowledged that by giving him the responsibility of sannyas at a very, very quick uh, part of his practice of Krishna consciousness. Um, Prabhupada took um, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita and said to Bhakti Charu Maharaj, translated into English from Bengali into English. And he made that his project. He used he would tell me that 
during that time he was working on the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he would get up in the morning and the, after taking care of his personal needs, he would immediately begin work on the Chaitanya Charitamrita and work throughout the entire morning. And then in the afternoon, he would chant his rounds and then go on to other activities. So he made that his bhajan every day, hours and hours and hours doing the translation work. Um, I had the good fortune when I was staying in Mayapur, I wasn't able to find a suitable place for my living conditions and my needs. And Bhakti Thru Maharaj had a very nice room, which was in the, uh, it was in the Lotus Building, all the way up on the top, uh, a huge, very big room. I think the bathroom itself was bigger than most rooms. <laughs> it was huge. And he offered it to me, he said, while I'm traveling, you can use my room. Please use my room. And I did that, especially when I received, when I had an operation, I had a hernia operation in the year 2008. And right after that, I went to Mayapur and it wasn't so easy for me to manage myself. And Maharaj said, please stay in my room. So he was like that. He was very kind, very loving, very compassionate. And he loved to cook. In fact, he used to cook for Srila Prabhupada all the time and Prabhupada would ask for his cooking. In fact, Prabhupada loved his cooking so much. He tells many stories of how he cooked for Srila Prabhupada. And it wasn't easy for cooking for Prabhupada because Prabhupada was very particular on how the prasadam should taste, how it should turn out. And Prabhupada was very exact on how things should be done. But Bhakti Churu Maharaj uh, learned very carefully Prabhupada's mood and Prabhupada's way of doing things. And then he applied that and Prabhupada was very pleased. So he was an expert. He was actually an expert cook. And many times he would invite all the devotees that were in Mayapur at the time. We would come sometimes for the GBC meetings. He would we'd go to his room and, and he would cook and at the same time conduct the rest of the cooking making sure everything was done first class. And then he would there be there personally supervising the serving of his god brothers. This was Bhakti Jaru Maharaj. I had a few personal experiences with him, which I can never forget. And I think one powerful experience I had was in the year 2001, Mm. He would also come to Chicago, and our temple president at that time received initiation from him. Um, he was a very reputable businessman who now became a temple president and took and took initiation for Bhakti Chur Maharaj. So uh, Maharaj would come uh, regularly to Chicago. So he, came, he happened to be there during the time when the 9-11 um, crisis happened in America. As it's described, uh, you know, these buildings were smashed by planes. And then uh, right after that, you know, there was huge restrictions on travel and there became a great fear that the Islamic nation was very indignant towards America and there would be many forms of retaliation. So um, we were there together and we were watching the, the videos of the uh, planes crashing into the Twin Towers. And then uh, I was the resident sannyasi in Chicago. And so I was staying there, but I would also travel quite often. 
sometimes I would get the re, the the title that I was the non-resident resident. In other words, I was traveling so much that being a resident of Chicago that was just in name only. And he was also traveling, so it was time for both of us to travel right after that incident happened. So we were speaking, and I said to Maharaj, I said, uh, you know, it may, it may not be a very good time for travel right now because, you know, all of the restrictions, the airports were practically shutting down. Nobody was flying, you know, on the planes, there are only a few people traveling, not even that. And so I was just giving a cautionary statement saying that, you know, maybe I'll just stay a little bit longer and wait till situation changes. And um, he said to me, he said, uh, he said, he looked at me with great seriousness and said, um, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a hero dies only once. And then I got the message, you know, and the next day he was out traveling and preaching again. So that was Maharaj. He was fearless despite what was going on around him. He kept preaching, traveling, inspiring devotees, and always looking for ways to open projects. In fact, it was his project in America, which he wanted to complete. He was in, he was feeling the anxiousness. Here he was, he was in Ujjain at the time. COVID had kind of put everyone on a restriction. But Maharaj was thinking, my project in, in America is not really getting the uh, attention it should get. The devotees are, are also struggling. So let me go and help with the project. So that's when, of course, when he did start traveling, this one, he started to get sick and later went to the hospital. But um, that was his determination that he was thinking that project needs some help. So he sacrificed his life in order to preach Krishna consciousness. And for him, that was something normal, something that he lived for, something that he inspired us to live for, and that is to do whatever you can to spread Krishna consciousness. It's the need of the time, and it will be always be the need of the time. Um, we had many, many wonderful uh, experiences together. Um, my first meeting with Bhakti Churu Maharaj was in 1980. 1980. At that time, I was the Pujari in uh, Prabhupada's palace in New Vrindavan, West Virginia. And uh, he had come. I think it was his, the, the palace had just opened a few months ago. And uh, I had been given the position of being the pujari for Srila Prabhupada. And so I was doing the puja and he came and I was the pujari. And then there was a cook named Nandu Kumara who was also a Prabhupada disciple. So we were managing Prabhupada's palace with cooking and pujari work and also organizing the cleaning and other activities. And he came. And of course, his heartfelt desire was to, was to cook for Srila Prabhupada. So Nanda Kumara graciously says, stepped aside and uh, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj took over the kitchen. And I was there to receive the offering and to put it in front of Srila Prabhupada. So for many hours he cooked and it was a very huge feast for Srila Prabhupada. And then it was given to me and I put it on the altar. And while I was doing the offering, in fact, right towards the end of it, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj walks on the altar. And uh, 
he sees something on the altar that catches his attention in a very strong way. It was a drum, a little tom-tom drum, kind of these little drums with a canvas top on it. You could hold it in your hand and you beat it with the other hand. We call them tom-toms. And uh, he saw the drum. Now this drum was the first drum that Srila Prabhupada acquired to begin the Hare Krishna movement. If you hear the old Hare Krishna tunes in the old days, the recordings, you'll hear this beating. It, it sounds like tom, 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 tom. That's Prabhupada beating on that drum. He probably didn't have a Murdanga. Murdangas came maybe a, even a couple of years later. It wasn't easy to get a Murdanga from India shipped to America. And so Prabhupada was using this little drum. And so that drum was actually the first drum ever used in the Hare Krishna movement. So it was there on the altar in front of Srila Prabhupada. And when he saw that drum, he became overwhelmed with emotion. He picked up the drum like it was a long lost friend and embraced it. And then he turned to me and he said, this drum is started the Hare Krishna movement worldwide. And I had been seeing that drum every day. It was, it was there on the altar. Uh, but I the appreciation that he had for that drum really went deep into my mind and heart and helped me to understand that this was something very special. And so for that day on, I saw that drum in a different way as being in one sense, uh, very dear to Srila Prabhupada. And so this is uh, my first meeting with Bhakti Charun Maharaj. And I must say there was another little uh, incident that happened during that time when he went on to the altar, he had removed his socks and left them in the, in the uh, area you know, going in, into the deity room. And so when he left, he had forgotten to take his socks. So I guess it would have, if I was a, a dutiful person, I would have picked up the socks and looked for him and, and returned his socks, but I didn't do that. I thought this is a very special gift. And so I kept them. <laughs> I kept those socks. I uh, actually kept them for many years. And I think I gave them away after one point to someone, but um, who had such affection for Bhakti Chur Maharaj. But those socks, you know, were something that was, I felt that Krishna had gifted me, uh, not only his association, but a, 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 life, a lifetime time friendship with a very special personality. And many times we were together in London, in Ujjain, in Chicago, and sometimes we would meet in traveling in different places. Um, so um, my good fortune was really unlimited when it came to Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Um, uh, his glories are unlimited. Um, his love for Prabhupada, his love for the devotees, his uh, intense desire to spread Krishna consciousness was hard to understand. It was just amazing. And so uh, we're remembering him on this particular day as someone very special. When the news broke that he had no longer you know, it was no longer with us on this planet. It caused a devastation wave across the entire ISKCON society. Reading some of the uh, writings of the devotees who were dear, who were close to Bhakti Churu Maharaj, you could feel how much love they had for Maharaj. Uh, it was so deep. It wasn't just some uh, you know, God brother feelings of, you know, camaraderie. It was much, much more deeper. He was like a very dear family member 
very special. And so when he left, he left us with confusion, with, we were questioning, you know, why did Krishna take him? He had so much to offer and was offering to the entire world, not only to Iskon with his devotion. But we know that whatever the Supreme Personality of Godhead does, it's always the best. And so obviously using this sickness, Krishna took him back to Srila Prabhupada. That was his long desire to, oh, to somehow or other, again, associate with Srila Prabhupada. When Prabhupada left the planet, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was so devastated. In fact, for, for a while, it was so hard for him even to go on. His attachment for Prabhupada, his love for Prabhupada, his association for Prabhupada, his service to Prabhupada was, he was one of the more intimate associates of Srila Prabhupada towards the Prabhupada's last few months when Prabhupada was uh, departing the planet. He would cook for Prabhupada, he would take care of Prabhupada, he would, he, Prabhupada would speak to him very intimately about many subject matters. So he had such a close relationship to Prabhupada that was quite, quite deep. And so when Prabhupada left the planet, Bhakti Chu Maharaj really suffered a lot. But he understood the philosophy that, that uh, service and separation is also uh, bhakti. Not to simply forget about the person or lament about their disappearance, but to continue to serve them. So he kept his desire and he increased his service more and more to Srila Prabhupada. And it's been said by many that it seems like Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was really, really missing the association of Srila Prabhupada. So it appears that his departure was Krishna's way of fulfilling his desire to again get the association of his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, we are, we are creating an ISKCON society in the spiritual world. Krishna will be there, I will be there, and all of you will also be there, and we will have our ISKCON in the spiritual world. <laughs> Prabhupada said that. So, uh, yeah, this is spiritual life. Death is a, is a stepping stone to a higher state of consciousness, a higher state of existence. For one who dedicates everything in the service of the Supreme Lord and his pure devotee. So the life of Bhakti Churu Maharaj is exemplary. Maharaj fortunately gave us a wonderful book which he entitled Ocean of Mercy in which he describes his whole life coming to before meeting Srila Prabhupada and when he met Prabhupada and how he served Prabhupada. Uh, the book is just so deep in wonderful pastimes of his relationship with Srila Prabhupada, many interesting incidences I read it when it first came out, and then when Maharaj left the planet last year at this time, I read it again. I could read it again and continue to relish in the contents of such a beautiful expression of bhakti, ocean of mercy. He was simply glorifying Srila Prabhupada's character, an ocean of mercy. And so um, for those of you who haven't read the book, uh, you're missing something very wonderful. <laughs> so don't continue in that, in that 
scarcity. Take it, take the opportunity. It's a beautiful book. Once you start reading it, you'll find you can continue to read it and read it and never find yourself becoming tired. It's so and stimulating in devotion and so many wonderful historical events that we know nothing about the Maharaj had revealed in this book. Mm -hmm. So today is the solar anniversary of Maharaj's disappearance, the 24th of this month. There will be celebrations all over the world to honor his departure and to honor his contribution to Srila Prabhupada's mission of Krishna consciousness. So um, we are feeling uh, great. I mean, for me, it was hard for me to function after he left. I couldn't, I couldn't come to the uh, understanding that he was actually gone. He was no longer with us. I, I, I couldn't actually believe it. I was thinking all I have to do is travel to India and I would see him either in Mayapur or in Ujjain, he'd be there. My mind and my heart would not allow me to accept that he was no longer available. He made such an impact on devotees in such a very personal way that that really brought us great, great satisfaction and happiness. And that was Bhakti True Maharaj. And when he would speak Krishna consciousness, especially when he would speak Krishna's pastimes, uh, you would find yourself just marveling at, at, the, at uh, how he would express the sweetness of Krishna consciousness, especially Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Uh, so sweet, so loving. His heart was absorbed in glorifying the Lord in such a, such an, a glorious way, glorious in the sense that he, he was practically a poet when he would speak. His words were so ornamented with so many, so many devotional uh, expressions that it would just simply captivate your mind listening to him describe Krishna consciousness. Humility was his, one of his outstanding qualities. Although so powerful spiritually, he was so humble and so unpretentious, but yet so clear on what to do and how to do it in the best possible way. This was just a few of the unlimited qualities of Bhakti Chur Maharaj. So we hope to speak again, maybe on the 24th of this month, uh, um, more about his glorious life. Um, we just scratched the surface a little bit here. There's much more that could be glorified. And then you'll see there will be a series of uh, presentations in video forms from very senior, various senior devotees who will speak about Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. Whether you're a disciple or just someone who met him, or even if you don't know him, still take time. You'll find that there is a, his life will teach you so much about what is Krishna consciousness. <laughs> what is the ideal state of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so I'll uh, conclude here. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, uh, for beautiful memories of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swamiji. Um, I can see Guru Maharaj like one astukam on Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. I'm not sure whether that's uh, correct. I see like very nice uh, Ashtakam on Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. Oh yeah, someone had written an Ashtakam? Yes. So. And uh, as you rightly said, like uh, so many nice tributes on YouTube and on Ishkon Desire Tree on Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. Very nice. Mm. Like, 
So yeah, his his life was full. Mm -hmm. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions or if you have any realizations uh, you would like to share, uh, please uh, unmute yourself. I see uh, Dheeraj Prabhu has sent me one message, Guru Maharaj, uh, on WhatsApp a few minutes back. Uh, he mentioned that he met Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj uh, in 2019 December, last time. And he recorded that video. He has sent me that clip when he was dancing and involved. If he said that if your permission, then I can play that video. Oh, the uh, when I was dancing in Ujjain, about Maharaj was singing. No, no, it's uh, just like Maharaj. Uh, he has shared one video clip of one less than one minute. It's just Maharaj dancing on. This thing, December 2019. Oh, okay. You want to play it now? I will play um, Guru Maharaj. It's just Dheeraj yeah. Prabhu has requested for that. So, yeah, please. Ah, ah, Hare Krishna. It was a very small clip, but very nice, beautiful. Mm, thank you. I also received one from one of his disciples. Maharaj was singing and I was dancing in Ujjain. And this was, uh, I think, Maybe about five years ago. Dear Raj, are you, dear Raj, are you feeling healthy again? We hope you're you're well. The devotees have been praying for your health. I hope you have regained your full health. Uh, Dheeraj Prabhu, can you hear us? Mm, we'll just, yeah. yeah, good. Thank oh, you. Can hear. Good, good, good. He said, I can't speak. Yeah. But he says he's fine. Yes. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, hey, good. Anyone else want to say anything? Mm -hmm. Shri Devi Mataji has mentioned in the chat, uh, Guru Maharaj, one thing that Ishkon Ujjain is the first solar power temple in Ujjain and probably the only fully solar power temple. Hmm. Yeah, Maharaj is always thinking how to make things more nice <laughs> practical yeah there's so many wonderful features about that temple that are unique now, Maharaj was the brains behind everything he would inspire many ideas get projects going and soon things would start to manifest Anything else? <laughs> okay, we'll just end here. It says, I'm recovering little. Like we can't really see the whole thing. Recovering slowly. 
Good. Um, my humble suggestion is take a take sufficient amount of ginger, vitamin C, vitamin D, and especially zinc. And you can also add selenium. Selenium is a mineral and zinc is a very powerful mineral. These things are good preventatives for the, from the, for the virus and it's also helpful in curing the virus too. Good. And stay away from sugar. Don't eat sweets. They don't help if you're sick. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll speak on the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And the following day we'll speak a session about health. A little bit exploring the whole principle of health again as we do occasionally. And we have some additional things that we can add to our presentation. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I could find that video which you were saying where Bhakti Charu Maharaj is singing and you are like it's a five years old. In you found it? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I, I'm not sure whether this is the same one, but I could find one. Um, there's a, a large group of devotees dancing with me. Mm, yes, Guru Maharaj. I would just, I'm yeah. not sure whether. Can I play it? Yeah, we like to see. That Thank you. Be, yeah. Yeah, this is the this is the video. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, no sound. There's no sound here. Yeah. Oh sorry. Let me. I'm not sure why it's not okay. Is it coming? Mataji, can you hear? Any yes, sound? Prabhuji, yeah. Okay.
slow motion <laughs> better to see it in its actual normal motion <laughs> anyway it was a, a taste okay thank you, bhakti Ch thank you. bhakti charu swami maharaj ki jai Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Vaishnava Kaur ki jai. Anant Kuti Vishnu Prindu. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, sharing all this. Thank you. Hey, whoa. Nittai Nataraj, he had so much association with Bhakti Churu. Yeah, he, yes, Maharaj. Uh, he came a uh, few times to Chicago, and plus uh, I had met him in like a uh, new one, that one, like a uh, 24 hour kitchen. So it was amazing the way he's singing. I mean, just uh, incredible, you know. And the same to the book, it, uh, the mercy, uh, Ocean of Mercy, same thing, and just uh, so sweet. And it's, it was special, and we all missing him, you know. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for sharing all this, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. See everyone tomorrow. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Archana City. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Sachi Bama. Hare happy Krishna birthday. Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Sachi Bama had a birthday a few days ago. We forgot to say happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, <laughs> Mataji. <laughs> Shamarani's birthday is coming up very soon. <laughs> thank you, sir. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. And Anasuya's birthday was just a couple days ago. <laughs> so many birthdays in this month. It's just unlimited. Hare Krishna, Guru Dev. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Agni. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Who's that? Uh, Sri Devi Dasi Guru Maharaj. Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Oh. <laughs> oh, Guru Maharaj, I'm your most fallen, worthless, useless, crazy, absolutely demented, senile, lame, dumb, crippled, deaf, blind. That's who I am. That's my introduction. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, 
you know, we have a, there's a place for everybody in this gun, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving this poor red shelter, Guru Bharat. Danvat Pranam Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Jai the jewel of the holy name, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much yeah. for the holy class. Yeah, today, today in our Ljubljana temple, Bhakti, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Bir Krishna Maharaj came and he did initiations. He initiated five devotees. Oh, wow. Yeah, we had a very, I mean, the temple was more than 100 devotees in there. It was packed. Mm -hmm. Five devotees received first first initiation and uh, one devotee, disciple of Jai Pataka Maharaj, got second initiation. So. So, oh, amazing. Yeah, grand celebration today. Hare so, Krishna. Everybody out there who's not initiated, think about your future. <laughs> Can't wait for that, Maharaj. <laughs> I mean, that's, it says the human form of life is meant to traverse the path of bhakti. And in order to do that, one has to find a bona fide spiritual master and follow that process for perfection. When one comes to that stage, they enter into human life. It says that human life begins when one begins their regular worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm -hmm. yeah. encourage everyone yeah. to get, to, to come up to the standard where they're ready for that next step, the big step. You're trying, Guru Maharaj. Okay. I'm trying my if, you, if you're <laughs> trying, if you're trying, you will succeed. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, with your blessings, definitely. But keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And my obeisances to your wonderful daughter also. Oh, Guru Maharaj, thank you. <laughs> She's here only. <laughs> she, wants, she wants to pay, pay her obeisances as well. Okay, I'll I, put my video on. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay my obeisances to her also. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, nice to see you again. It's been Hare so Krishna, long. how are you? Hey, uh, I guess my question is, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very well, thank you very much. How are, are you? you do, are you doing? Are you doing kirtan? Yes, we did a lot of kirtan during the past week because both my parents were off. My brother was back down as well, so we did a lot of kirtan <laughs> as a family. At the, temp at the temple? No, we, we actually went. Um, on holiday, so we had like a, uh, we went on holiday to the Lake District and then we went on holiday to a beach. So we did Kirtan in both places. Yeah, and then other people came too. People from the outside heard your Kirtan? Yeah, the they did. Yeah, they did. Oh, good, good. Their trip to the beach was successful. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Good, good, good. Thank you. You're you're spreading the the supreme mercy, the holy name of the Lord. Yeah, it and was that, her birthday. That's why Guru Maharaj <laughs> Ria's birthday was there this week. So many birthdays in this month, and I know it is <laughs> one on top of the other. I know. It looks like everyone wanted to be born in June and, and July. Every <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, true. Good, good. I hope to come to London someday and do Kirtan again. Yeah. Please, Guru Maharaj, we can't wait yeah. for you to come back, come to London. I'm 
there's a lot of people who are stopping me for coming. It's called the immigration officers. But I know. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, I I would be there yesterday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know we haven't we haven't opened up the doors yet. Unfortunately, they haven't. They are so strict here. July we're praying. 19th, we're praying. July nineteenth will be another decision day, right? Yes, yeah. it is. It is. Yes, we are praying. Everything praying. goes okay, and then <laughs> yeah, you can if travel. If that come, if it comes open, then um, I'm going to be looking towards British Airways. <laughs> Ooh, brilliant! <laughs> Looking yeah, forward depends. to having you here. <laughs> okay, but keep doing kirtan because there's no better way to spread Krishna consciousness than chanting the holy names. Absolutely. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. We'll do. Hare Krishna. You know, Hare Krishna. Word, word kirtan Sorry. comes from the word kirti. Kirti means fame. Yeah. So mm -hmm. one who does kirtan is glorifying the all famous supreme personality of Godhead. So that's the word kirtan. But kirtan has another meaning. It means those who engage in kirtan, they're also kirti. <laughs> also, they become famous. <laughs> famous in the sense that in the eyes of the Lord, they're very special. Anyone who does kirtan. So yeah. continue and you'll always get you receive you'll be always receiving the full blessings of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, we do feel nice when we do Kirtan Guru Maharaj, definitely. That's so true. <laughs> Even if you don't feel nice, keep doing it and you will feel nice. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we not we won't stop that. <laughs> Yeah, no way. <laughs> yeah. It's Lord Chaitanya's special mercy on the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everyone, everyone can identify with Kirtan. Sure. <laughs> True. And Prabhupada said, and then we add one more thing, Prashad. Yes. <laughs> And then the package is complete. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Susanna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Viva. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.